Now, when I say the other polarity is fear, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person who is in that energetic state is in a state of fear. He may well be in a state of ecstasy from the fear that he's creating in others. This is the thing. It isn't the fact that people live their lives in a state of fear. It's the fact that they induce fear into others so they can harvest that energy. And it's like an ecstasy for them. It's like, um, it's like a pure dark bliss. You know, the, the, the feeling that a person gets from their victim, a, a rapist or a, a wife beater or a child killer, one, some of these people that you would consider totally dreadful, I try to look at things on a, a, a deeper level. In, instead of judging the person, I try to understand the energy that they are in to, to commit that heinous act. And what you begin to see is that it's, it's a bliss, it's an ecstasy, it's, a, it's the same as what you feel when you're immersed in love, only it's the opposite side of the spectrum. And they are harvesting this energy from their victims by inducing a state of unparalleled fear and terror in their victims, they get to harvest that energy and take it into themselves. And it's like a drug to these people. See, that's how it works, folks. It's all about energy exchanges. And it is two different polarities of energy. And the ecstasy that a rapist feels is the polar opposite of the ecstasy that a lover feels. This is the thing. It's, it's two different types of energy. And if you can look at things this way, it gives you an understanding of what black magic and things really are. All of these ritual um, events that the elite carry out, all of these bizarre practices that they get up to, the way to really understand what these rituals are all about is to look at them all on an energetic level. Now, when you can gain an understanding of what reality is, when you can really see that everything that exists is simply pure energy and you begin to perceive that energy as being the two polarities of love and fear if you can totally eliminate fear from your life and really what's the fear folks what what's the fear about life what death well when you die you become infinite consciousness you, you return to the source gee how terrible there's nothing to fear in death, folks. Death is simply a transition. And death is what is used to keep people in a state of fear. Everything's death. I mean, you, 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 you can't pay the rent. You, you're in fear. Why? Because you might be kicked out and you might have to live in the cold and you'll die. At a root level, it always comes back to death, doesn't it? You know, you're, you're scared of being arrested and going to jail because you might get hurt in jail and die. You know, you're scared of driving somewhere because you might have a car accident and die. Whatever, it always comes back to death, doesn't it? This is what the ultimate fear is, the fear of death, the fear of the unknown. But when you gain an understanding of what reality is, well, what's to fear? There's nothing to fear. So if you can eliminate fear from your life, understanding that fear is one polarity of the energy, then you're in a state of love, aren't you? That's what unconditional love is, is the removal of all fear from your life and your ability to be able to meet these polarized fear energies head on without any personal fear to be able to embrace the shadow and heal the shadow and not just the shadow in yourself but the shadow that exists all around you because there are many people that are in the shadow there's a lot of the new age movement that will refuse to acknowledge any negative stuff around them if they see someone hurting someone else they won't say anything about it they'll simply say these two people are experiencing karma together and they should not interfere because if they interfere they uh, doing so because they haven't addressed a wound within themselves and they are in duality and they're in judgment and all this sort of rubbish, you know. In reality, the reason that they don't address this polarized activity that's going on is because they are in fear of the emotion that is raised inside them. They can't face the shadow. If I see polarized activity, I can address it. If I see a, a man beating up a child, I can go and stop that happening because of the empathy I have for the child. But I don't judge or hate the man. I feel more sorry for the man because what would put someone in that state of, of, of polarized energy, that state of energy harvesting, the state where they would have to commit that act against another person. They need healing. They don't need hurting. They need healing. These people need love. These people absolutely need love. And that's a hard thing for a lot of people to get their head around. But that's 
the way I look at things, folks. And to me, that's what unconditional love is. Unconditional love is the absence of fear. And we'll talk a little bit more about this anyway after the break. I think it's time for a break, folks. So we'll take a break here and we can come back and continue this conversation in a few moments. Welcome back, folks. Now, before the break, we were talking about unconditional love. I was saying that unconditional love is an absence of a state of fear within your life. Now, it's also acting in empathy. I mean, before the break, I was talking about, uh, as an example, a, a man beating up a child and how I would help the child out of empathy for the child, not out of hate or anger at the, the perpetrator. I do it because it needs to be done. It's, it's, it's necessary to do this in order to change the situation that I'm, I'm witnessing. See, empathy is the key, folks. Empathy is the key to the whole thing, you know. If you can really understand what reality is, then you can lose all fear of death. You see that most situations between people are simply energy exchanges, and you can diffuse most of these situations if you approach them in the right way. And of course, saying you need to lose all fear, I'm not saying you're going to walk up to uh, some, some biker who's, who's monstering people and, and pick a fight with him or anything like that. I'm not saying that you're going to start abusing police officers because you're, you're not in a state of fear. I mean, losing fear doesn't mean losing common sense. You don't want to aggravate situations, but you need to simply see all situations as energy exchanges and and be in a state of personal empowerment and be in your energy and deal with these situations on the proper level, from the proper energetic state. You'll find that if you can do this and, and you're not fearful of any situation, you realize it's an energy exchange. And so if you look at things from this perspective, you can simply deal with them on an energetic level and it does make a huge difference to your life. Well, it has to mine anyway. So I began this little section of this talk by discussing how the earth is changing and I suppose it may seem like I've gotten a little off track with all this today folks but I feel that it's very important that people do gain an understanding of energy and become aware of what energetic state they are centered in. I believe having an understanding of energy may well provide humankind with the means of making it through this period of change we are entering into. This is also why I believe it is very important for us to quickly address this monetary system because I believe that freeing people from the stress, from, from the emotional and financial hardship that this system creates would be of huge benefit to humankind on an energetic level through this transitional period. If people don't have to worry about money, don't have to worry about all, all this artificial stress that's induced into our lives, I think it could make a huge difference. Because it is a period of change, folks. And people may ask, well, what is this change that people keep talking about anyway? What are we talking about? Are we talking about the end of the world? Or what are we talking about? What signs do we actually have that suggest we are even in such a time of change. Well, there are certain things that are going on in the solar system, certain things the sun is doing. Um, it's just all the, the turmoil we're having here on Earth, which is being presented to us by the powers that be as climate change. And also, from an ancient perspective, we, we have in our possession an abundant amount of information available to us in the form of ancient mythologies, ancient legends, ancient texts. And these mythologies and histories have been left for us by a, a myriad of, of cultures, folks. Almost every ancient culture left us something that suggests that we should pay special attention to this particular time that we are in right now. And it soon becomes very apparent to anyone who has investigated these things that the ancient cultures who wrote these stories and legends that they left behind for us, they all viewed the current time in history as a time period of particular interest. 
There really are a large number of these legends and so-called prophecies that exist, folks, from the Mayan calendar through to the Indian text, the Vedas, uh, to the prophecies of the Hopi, people like Nostradamus, Mother Shipton, St. Malachi. Even the Pyramid timeline suggests that, um, that now is a time of great interest, a time of change.